TV down today. I know my last few videos on TV, but I turned it down today, and hopefully my phone won't ring or nothing will happen until I finish this video. But I'm going to say happy Halloween because this is going to be my Halloween video because I just got through working out and I am tired. I am tired. My nose is running like a river. But I wanted to come on and do a Halloween video because I, I've been having some dreams of lately that have been kind of scaring me. And I normally don't, um, I normally don't really dream that much, but I would say I had a nightmare one night last week, but it didn't really scare me, so I can't really call it a nightmare. It kind of like was kind of actually funny to me, but it was kind of a nightmare when you really would think, stop and think about it. But I was I was dreaming about these two exes of mine, these two guys, these two ex guys of mine. And it was the weirdest thing because these two guys did not like each other, would not have been together for anything, no physical, but they were together in the dream. So you know why they had to be dreaming, these two they were together, but they did not get each other. So the weirdest thing where they were sitting, and the weirdest thing was they were sitting out kind of like, you know, I guess it kind of looked like a patio. It was a really pretty surrounded with trees and a table. They were sitting there having a beer together, one on the other side of the table, one on this side of the table. And they were sitting there having a beer together. And I, I walked up. I back. I, got this I walked up. And I said, what are y'all talking about? Are you talking about me? And the one that was sitting next to me turned. But I had a machete in my hand. This is where it gets crazy. I had a machete in my hand, and I cut his head off, and his head just went bleh. I mean, that was the cleanest cut. I ain't never cut nothing that clean. That head just went blew right off, and there was much like from here down, there was just a real clean little cut. I, and then the weirdest thing about this dream is when that happened, all of a sudden, I jumped from that to another part of the dream. I tend to jump around when I dream. I'll be in one place, and then I'll be in another one. And so I, uh, the next section of the drum, you might say the next section of the story, kind of like I'm TV. Now you're watching television, you go from one plot to the next, whatever the story is. The next story came on, I was, there goes that dad go, boom! The next story, the next, when I continued to dream, I was back at home. And I was in the kitchen with my mom. And my mom, bless her heart, I love her. Is also deceased, rest in peace. And I was in the kitchen. And I came into the kitchen. And Mama said, "Where you been?" I said, "I've been shopping." And she was in there cooking. My mom was always in the kitchen cooking. So I've been shopping. She said, "Oh, okay." And uh, so then I was in there helping her do stuff. And next thing I know, I heard something knock on the door. It knocked again. I said, "I'm getting to my mom." And I went to the door. No one believed. Standing at the door was the guy that I had cut his head. I was excuse that phone, that phone going. Them ro you know the robocall. You hear you hear the video the robocall was it called all day long. So he was standing there at the door. And I opened the door. And he was standing there. And I'm looking like, you know, I'm in shock because I'm thinking, I'm gonna do no more movie tomorrow. So he said, cut on my head. <laughs> Cut off my head. With my head. And um, so, and I knew it was the one's head that cut off because I could tell by the physique because both of these guys had totally different physiques. You know, one of them look alike. So then, so my mom came to the door and she's standing there and, and my mom was like, you know, do you ever watch them uh, little rascal movies where Buck with eyes will get that big? Her eyes got that big and she was looking like, and I said, well, you, I told her what it was, but, um, and she said, uh, he said, cut off my head, and she said, and that really shocked him, she said, how's he talking, he ain't got no head, I said, mama, she said, how's he talking, he ain't got no head, I see he talking out of his ass the way he always did, <laughs> she said, you need to stop that, and, and so he said, I want my head, and uh, it was so weird and she and so and he kept saying i want my head and where's my head and she kept saying how's he talking because he ain't got no head and i kept telling her mom i told you he's talking out of his ass the way he always did 
But he came on in the house and he sat on the couch and she said, what are we going to do with it? And he said, I want my head. And I woke up. I'm going to tell you something. Going to the, having to go to the bathroom, have to urinate will wake you up from a night, from a bad dream. And I had to get into the bathroom. So I got up and went to the bathroom. When I came back and went back to sleep, I didn't dream no more. But that must have been my Halloween treat because I thought that was what I thought about the next day. And I laughed because I'm thinking that's got to be the wildest thing in the world. It's got to be my Halloween dream. But I'm not usually a scary person. And I don't watch Halloween movies or anything like that. I don't watch all that crazy stuff. But what is it, Freddy or somebody? And the guy that's killing people in the lake. And I did watch um, the chick the head turned around. Uh, the Exorcist. I did watch some of that because that kind of freaked me out a bit. That didn't really scare me as, as much as it just kind of freaked me out. But I'm going to tell you, I used to watch the Twilight Zone years ago. And the scariest thing that I've ever really watched was when I watched The Twilight Zone. I watched this movie on The Twilight Zone where this woman had went in to read her little girl a nighttime story. And she read her a nighttime story and put her to bed and everything. And so then she heard went out and I guess she had visited with her husband or whatever. And just before bedtime, she went back in to check her. And the little girl was not in the room. She called a little girl name. That little girl name was Jeannie or something. She called a little girl name. She called a little girl name. We looked under the bed. The husband came in. She called a little girl's name. They looked in the closet. They could not find a little girl. But then they heard a little girl home, Mommy, Mommy. And they were saying, Where are you? Where are you, sweetheart? And the little girl had rolled into the wall. And they were like, How did you get in the wall? How where are you? you? And she said, I'm in here. And they, touching the wall. How did you get in the wall? She said, the man, the man told me to come into the wall. And he, he come and told me, I guess I'm, I, the man told me to come into the wall and I put my hand and I fell into the wall. Child, I went in there and moved my bed to the middle of the floor. I ain't sleep next to no wall for months. I still don't sleep next to the wall. My bed right today is sitting away from that wall. I put the nightstand between me and the bed, me and the wall. I went right in there and I thought, thank God she didn't roll into, she didn't sink into the floor because I don't know what I would have done because I cannot walk on air. I ain't got there yet. I ain't gonna never get there. But that was about the scariest thing. That really creeped me out. I was, I mean, I wouldn't even touch the wall at night. I, I rolled over and didn't touch the wall. I jumped back. I moved that big in the middle of that floor at night though. I thought, mm-mm, jug that sucker out there. I went to the middle of the floor. But that was about the scariest thing. I don't like the dark. Now, them, all them people running in the woods, they always run in the woods. They always fall down when they run in the woods. You're running from the creature, the monster, whatever, you always fall down. Stumble over, can't see, looking behind you, but they're looking down at your feet, because you always fall down. I always fall down when you're running through the woods. The scariest time I had in the woods when my youngest was a Cub Scout. And we had to go, you know, you got to go do these overnight things. I'm not a woods person. I'm not a, it get dark in the woods at night. I'm here to tell you, if you're out in the woods at night in the forest, it's going to get dark. I'm going to go on my lighting is so clear. It's moved over here. It get dark in the woods at night. And I had to go to the bathroom. Me, my husband, my oldest, and my youngest were standing in the tent. And they had us put our tents up from the porta potties or from the bathrooms they had out there. We actually had like those outhouse type things out there at the lake. It was out by a lake because they was going to do this Indian thing for us the night after we got through set up and they was going to cook in the ground and all that Boy Scout stuff, Cub Scout stuff. So I had to go down to the bathroom and I said to my husband, I said, come on, go me down to the bathroom. He's watching. I'm just not looking there. We camping in the woods, but this, this man took his television, his television that you put batteries in. You know how you used to have them little old televisions you could put batteries in, they were black and white, but this is how addicted he was to television. He had to take it out there in the woods with him, and the, other, the oldest son said, no, they're playing on something, he brought a little hand game or something. You think you people really are calling y'all self lamping, I guess, aren't you? Y'all are just lamping it up out here in the woods. So, he said, go on down to the He had not, now this man was military, so he tied a string. I think this was part of the train the Boy Scouts, the Cub Scouts had to do. They tied a string from the tent that would go all the way down to the, to the, uh, to the bathroom. So you just hold on to the string, you know, and I'm thinking I had a flashlight, and I'm holding on to the string to go down to the bathroom. You just hold on to the string, go to the bathroom. He's watching some show. And I said, uh, to that cotton house. It's my reason my 
here's that air in my room. I said, come on, go me down there. He said, no. He said, you know what? Shivery is dead. It's good because Joey here though. So then I'm going on down to the to the um, thing and I'm holding on to the string and I'm in the flashlight trying to see. I walked right into this spider web. She had built the biggest web. Oh man, that thing got on me. I'm screaming, I'm hollering, I'm screaming, I'm hollering. Ah! Just like my mom that said I screamed and hollering about everything. My husband felt the same way. Just screaming at home, the woman in the world, she hollered about everything. He's like, what's happening with you? I don't spy on me. So he comes out there, and him and the two boys, the boys come out there, and they beat me in the top of the head trying to get the spider. I'm like, stop hitting my head, fool. And so he, he's hitting me on my head, and he's like, I have to get the spider off him. You know, I think he's enjoying that spider ridden a little bit too much. And But that was horrifying for me and, and everything. I just, you know, by that time, women didn't go down to the bathroom because it was like, let's go back to the game, find some change into. But that doesn't matter. That old, that water out. But that was very, very scary for me. But I'm, like I said, I'm not really scared. I've had a couple of bumps where I scared them. When I was younger and I babysit for this uh, couple, my mom, had, I think I was 14, 13, turned 14, and my mom had said that this lady named Lindy, 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 I think was her name, wanted me to babysit for her because she worked on the afternoon shift. And she had three kids. They were like, um, I think the oldest was seven or eight, and the youngest was uh, 11, years, 11 months or something like that. Anyway, I said, she said, you know, she's going to pay you. So after school, I would go up there and went to the first night I went up there to babysit with them. There goes that phone again. I went up there, I told you, every 10 to 15 minutes that phone rings. It's very irritating. I'm going to move right on with my stirred until we don't hear it. I went up there to, um, babysit so while I was up there babysitting you know we was watching TV and everything I had gave, gave them their dinner and this was probably about she said put them to bed about eight o'clock and so this was probably they ate dinner after school they came in I got in they ate dinner then they because their dad dropped them off because he had to work out in the too and then I fed them dinner and then they was got their bath and about seven we're gonna sit down and watch our TV so they got hungry I'm hungry. I want a snack. We get a snack, but we go to bed. Cause you don't know what to believe when your kids tell you nothing. But, you know, Mama didn't tell you that, but you know, so all right, whatever. I says, I'll, okay, I'll make you a snack. So the thing about their house was, you had to go way down the hall to get to their kitchen. It was kind of a weird house. The kitchen was in the back of the house. And every, the living room was in the front, so you had to go down the hall, and the bedrooms was on each side, and you went down this hall, and you went to the kitchen, and then you had a bathroom in the front, and the bathroom in the back. So, I went, I said, well, come on, I'm going to go out to the kitchen and make y'all um, peanut butter sandwiches, but y'all got to brush your teeth out for this. So, I went out to the kitchen, and I'm out in the kitchen, and I'm making the peanut butter sandwich. I heard something on the porch. So we out in the country. They live, they live back down. You turn off the road and you drive about a mile down to that house in the woods. I don't like the woods. So I'm in there making the sandwich and I heard some other folks. Some kind of animal or something. You know? They decided walking. I thought, what's going on there? And so, you know, I look out the window. I don't see nothing. I'm going, okay. And so then the oldest child came back. Cherry came back. I didn't even call it Cherry. Cherry came back and uh, she said, uh, I come back, I'm having sandwiches. I'm like, I said, Cherry, I said, um, you hear something I don't remember? She said, no, I hear not And so I'm doing, it did it again. I went to walk across over the port, the, the things were scraping. I said, you don't hear that? She said, yeah, I heard that. I said, well, what you say? She said, well, I heard the first time you asked. And I said, well, she said, she said, oh, that's probably Mr. 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 John. I said, who is Mr. John? He said, oh, Mr. Johnson, he used to live here before we did. Daddy said he died in the house and he always haunted the house. Mr. John, I'm thinking, really? They're going to send me into a haunted house to babysit? I said, well, Mr. John don't know come in the house, do he? She said, no, he nice, really. But you know, they always say children can kind of detect this and see these things and ghosts and stuff. I'm like, mm-mm. I said, well, let's get these sandwiches made. She said, 
She says, sometimes though, Mr. John be in the kitchen because he be rattling around in here. Maybe messing with the pots or something. He be in the kitchen sometimes. And I'm thinking, oh, Jesus, this house. So I said, okay. Okay, enough about Mr. John. So we going back. I said, let's go. So I'm walking down the hall. And I'm looking from side to side. And I'm going down that hall. And I'm turning on the hall light. And I'm making sure the lights and everything lit up. And I, I gave him that sandwich. And, and I said, they come 8 o'clock. I'm going to tell you what. Big time was missed that night. They brushed them teeth and they stayed up and that mama came home. I said, no, mm, mm. well, we got, no, no, we got to go to bed and ain't nobody leaving me and by myself in this room. Go, Mr. John, I do not need company from Mr. John. No, no, no. So, and I, I, when she came home and she go take me home and she took me home and I, mama said, well, you going to, I said, no, not going. I said, why you going to go up there, baby? I said, I'm not going back up at that house no more, mama. My mama already knew that though. My mama had already known that that, that house was haunted. She said, oh yeah, I meant to tell you. Mm, mama always meant to tell me something after that. Like, mm -hmm. that's something else she didn't tell me. Mm, I thought, Lord, you always tell me stuff after the fact. So, now, I have had some scary times whenever I was younger, but I'm not really scared of horror movies. I don't really watch them, but I'm not really that afraid of them. That was a couple of scary things that happened in my life. And I'm telling you, Halloween is a coming. I'm going to say, boo, Halloween to you. Happy Halloween. Man. This is going to be my Halloween video. Everything's going great. The weather's getting cooler in North Carolina. It's cooling down a lot. These mornings are brisky and frisky. Oh, it feels good to snuggle up with a blanket and a cup of coffee. And I'm trying to work out more this week. So wish me luck on that. Give me a thumbs up on that. And... Give me a comment. Give me a joke. As always, I'm always interested in a good joke. Tell me about your most scary Halloween adventure. Everything. And I'm going to say trick or treat. And I'm going to see you later. Don't forget. Laugh with Luby. Subscribe. Thumbs up.